Joining us live is Jonathan Peled, Interim Ambassador of the Embassy of Israel in Australia. Jonathan, what are the terms of the ceasefire? Can you outline them for us? Good morning, Gabriela. Well, yes, as you heard, I mean, the uh, agreement is a, a non-conditional agreement, the only condition being peace, peace and quiet. And that's what we need to ensure now, that Hamas does not rebuild and restart another uh, wave of rockets against the Israeli citizens. Can you give us a sense of how tense and complicated these talks were and why it took 11 days to achieve? Well, obviously, we didn't start uh, with this and we had to take all uh, necessary measures reluctantly uh, to defend our population. Uh, more than 4,000 rockets were fired at us indiscriminately, uh, trying to hit as many uh, civilians on our side as possible. Um, the reason it took uh, so long is uh, we needed to make sure that we degrade Hamas's capabilities and, and put an end to this so that uh, Israeli citizens can sleep quietly um, and not run to uh, bomb, shelter, uh, bomb shelters again. Uh, and so we very much hope that this uh, ceasefire is not just a Band-Aid, but a, a, a long-standing, uh, sustainable, quiet and peace for, let's hope, for, for, for many years. Of course, let's hope so. But what specifically did you, did Israel achieve here with the military operation and how do you justify the civilian deaths that came with it? It's very unfortunate. We've seen these harrowing uh, scenes and, and, uh, and pictures of what's going on on, on both sides. Um, uh, unfortunately, when you're uh, confronting a terrorist organisation that uh, has no respect or regard for uh, human life, who tries to inflict not only um, casualties and harm on Israel's side, but also uh, on their own side. They've been shooting rockets uh, at their own population, and they don't care. They've been hiding uh, within uh, very populated uh, um, uh, areas. They shoot rockets and missiles out of uh, schools, hospitals, uh, 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 press towers. Um, and that, unfortunately, uh, causes uh, harm and damage also to uninvolved. And, of course, it's very, very tragic, and we uh, regret any uh, loss of, of life of those who are unharmed. Uh, but the uh, a call has to be addressed to a terrorist organization, as I said, uh, that calls not only on the destruction of Israel, but calls on for bloodshed and for terror. One of the most fundamental grievances Hamas and Palestinians have is around the Israeli settler program, where essentially you have Israeli settlers taking the homes and territory from Palestinians. You can argue the legality of this program, but can you understand the anger that this creates amongst Palestinians that can lead to this sort of conflict? There can be no justification or pretext for launching a, a, a total war and, and sending thousands of rockets uh, um, towards civilian population. Uh, there are two narratives here. There's the Israeli narrative, there's the Palestinian narrative. Um, we've been uh, um, involved in negotiations and in peace talks with the Palestinians in the past. Only a few months ago, we signed the Abraham Accords with other uh, Muslim and Arab um, uh, neighbors and countries. So there definitely is proof that uh, we can uh, achieve peace and understanding and reconciliation with our neighbors. We just have to take out of this equation terrorist organizations that call only for destruction and bloodshed and do not represent in any way the Palestinian cause. They're harming their own cause. We're hearing reports of a dire situation in Gaza with low medical and food supplies, difficulty in getting clean water. Can you guarantee that Israel will give unfettered access to aid groups and international organisations wishing to deliver this aid? Absolutely. Israel has always uh, upheld uh, humanitarian assistant and let humanitarian assistant uh, enter Gaza. Uh, before this uh, recent uh, conflict uh, flared up, all humanitarian, all food, uh, all supplies are, are coming through from Israel. We supply the gas, the energy, the electricity to, to the Gaza Strip, and they're firing, they're shooting the, the, the tree or the, the, the branch they're sitting on. So uh, Israel, of course, is very, very uh, um, aware of the humanitarian needs and will always uphold humanitarian relief and assistance to, to the people of Gaza. The people of Gaza are not our enemy. 
it's the Hamas who are our enemy, who are taking their own population as a hostage and uh, causing all this unnecessary violence and tragic casualties on both sides. Just finally, what needs to be done to ensure we're not in the same situation in two years' time? First of all, really, that Hamas can, does not rearm, does not manage to stockpile rockets and missiles, and uh, that the moderates uh, on the Palestinian side uh, everywhere uh, are willing to sit down and negotiate. Unfortunately, as long as we have um, actors like Hamas, like Hezbollah, and other uh, Palestinian terror organizations, uh, we will not be able to resume peace talks. So I think it's a vested interest for all peace-seeking uh, partners and actors to um, eliminate and take out of the equation these organizations and bring back the moderates and those who are willing to dialogue um, and to try and work again on peace and reconciliation. And as I said earlier, uh, the proof is that it is possible. We've achieved it only uh, recently, a few months ago, uh, and we've done it in the past. Uh, there is no reason why peace and reconciliation cannot prevail in, in the Middle East. Jonathan Pallad, Interim Ambassador of the Embassy of Israel in Australia, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much.